What is so different about this offseason so far for Michigan State football? Also, who is due for a big fall coming up? It's not just me talking about it. We got Matt Wenzel of M Life. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On Spartans, your team in green and white, five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe, comment below on YouTube, and do whatever makes you happy to kick off your day here. Hey, I'm having a great start to the day because we are talking with Matt Wenzel of MLive, and I can't believe that I've never dragged him onto the show before here because he is one of the hardworking folks on this MSU beat. We always like go to his Twitter, read off some quotes every once in a while because, again, this guy is in the trenches over there. Matt, how on earth are we doing in the midst of spring ball on your end? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty standard, I think, uh, for spring, but uh, I'm doing pretty good, uh, and it's always nice to uh, be joined by another Matt. Yeah, there we go. Let's go. Just the power of Matt's right now, just ripping and roaring. Um, Look, one of the storylines for spring, let, let's not kid ourselves here, is that things are different. It's a new head coach. We've got some new players. You get to go to these practices. You get to see a small peek inside of the window of what goes on during these sessions here. What is the biggest difference so far between this year and what you've been seeing the last few years under Mel Tucker? Uh, I mean, it's just after the last few years, they just needed a complete reset. I mean, yeah. I don't think I'm I'm uh, breaking any uh, news here. No, <laughs> you know, especially last year. You know, it was just yeah. such a disaster. And uh, you know, we, I think it's just you know you have a little bit of uh, buzz. You get some hope because you have a new head coach. You have an offensive-minded head coach for the first time in a while. Um, and just there's just you're not hearing the same you know aggregation of marginal gains. You know, right. the same coach speak right. over and over. Now it's going to be different coach speak. The only difference. Is, is a is it going to be successful coach speak but um smith yeah. just brings a you know brings a new attitude you know he's a he's a, still a relatively young head coach and he's a rising uh, star i guess you, you'd say west coast guy obviously and you know it just gives him gives everybody a little bit of a breath of fresh air and a chance it's to focus on this upcoming season and and hope for the program in the future because it was clearly not trending in the right direction the last few years yeah, and Jaden Mangum kind of alluded to that. I was reading a piece on Spartans Illustrated, and he said, like, look, last year, like, by the end of it, we were all just tired. No kidding. I mean, God, us fans were exhausted. I can't imagine what it was like being an actual player. So that actually does the hard work on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you get the sense that that was just more than Jaden Mangum and that there's actually renewed energy here? Or what's what's your vibe on how the players are handling this spring? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are multiple guys. I think Dylan Tatum was the one. I mean, there are other guys that said, yeah. too. basically, like, we're starting from scratch, clean slate. They, you know, not, you know, it's not like they wouldn't talk about last year and acknowledging all the difficulties and all that. But, um, you know, and the coaches have said it before, you know, that's the past and we're focused on the future. But, you know, some interesting yeah. things that you heard. Um, I think it was Dylan Tatum, you know, speaking about the secondary and just some of the coaching um, philosophies being alluding to they're kind of stuck in the past and 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 not changing with the game and so I mean a couple of things like that but you know there's nine new assistant coaches yeah. uh Courtney Hawkins receivers coach is the only one coming back so you're getting a fresh perspective all the way around especially on the defensive side where it's just everybody's new and that's a great way to just funnel into this next topic here because you guys have had some you know sound bites come out of these media days Nothing too earth shattering, at least in my opinion, but how about from you? Like, what is the biggest takeaway when you're talking to either the head coach, assistant coaches, or players here? Finding any new nuggets that you think should perk the eyebrows of us state fans? Well, I mean, it is spring ball. So mm -hmm. you're not getting you're not getting a lot of, of what you would you know, I mean, obviously Aiden Giles is expected to be the court the starting sure. quarterback. That's not a surprise. Right. Um Dylan Tatum is now working more at strong safety again. And um, Tanner Miller is, you know, he's a guard center. And, and the plan, as we found out this week, is very, very much so for him to be a center at Michigan State. But other than that, I mean, you're, it's just it's just a lot of 
generalities. You know, we don't, you know, right. we're, the little, the 20, 30 minute windows or whatever we're, we're allowed to see in the practice. We're not, we're not seeing live 11 on 11 stuff. Yeah. And, right. And really breaking down things. So, and if I could go back the number of years, I heard coaches in the spring talking about so-and-so being a, uh, you know, emerging and this and that, and never to, you know, this player said player never really never even gets on the field the next year. So I know, okay. you know, grain of salt with all that stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, just, I, I, you know, like the, I said, you know, Tatum's position, Miller's position, those are those are a couple of things. And mostly it's just been getting some insight from some of these guys. You know, we haven't talked to Jordan Hall since since last season ended. Uh, you know, we hadn't talked to the new assistant coaches and, and some of these transfers, Jack Belling, Tanner Miller, stuff like that, just to get an insight into, you know, their thought process in, in transferring to Michigan State and, and just what it's been like with under new staff for, you know, it's been four months basically since the guys got on campus in January. Davion Prem comes to mind when you're talking about like spring guys. I Like you would have thought he was already in New York City for the Heisman ceremony, by the way, he was talking about in spring ball. But uh, yeah. nevertheless, I don't even know if he got three touches that upcoming year. But look, again, spring ball, not going to get a ton. But there is one fascinating nugget that I can't fully wrap my head around. Maybe it means really good things for the cornerback room. Maybe it's not at all. But Dylan Tatum going back to the safety role. Why? <laughs> I just well, point blank. Why? That's a you know good question. I think it's more that you know when you're gonna when you have a new staff, you have mm -hmm. obviously Blue Adams and, and Demetrius Martin as as your new secondary guys, and you know it's just them evaluating players and, and the fit. And you know Tatum, I, I thought he did a decent job last year. You know, at, at corner, you know, yeah. tough position, but um. You know, his build always kind of struck me as more of a safety. You know, it's funny because he came in here. Oh, yeah. You know, he was an early enrollee uh, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. And he's, I'm going to play nickel. And before you know it, it's safety. And, the, and he's bouncing all over the place and and then corner. So I think the staff must just they like the fit there a little bit better. But, you know, they, you know, blue blue the other day just basically said, you know, he's going to we're going to use him wherever we need to, you know, call him sure. a Swiss Army knife. So, you know, that would be, you know, it's fitting personnel and to scheme and where they like him best. And, and it must, you know, and they have, you know, that it's a good young safety room, you know, with when you're talking about, you know, right. Tatum, Mangum and Spencer being, uh, you know, all 30, 30 year guys back there. And they got some young guys at, at young talent at corner um, chance Rucker, obviously being a guy who stepped up as a true freshman last year. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, don't be surprised if Dylan ends up playing somewhere else. So okay. this fall, but I mean, for now, it, it looks like that's the plan that everything's uh, subject to change as, as we know. Yeah. Cause like th that news drops and I'm starting to think, well, maybe it's like the ultimate positive spin zone is that, Hey, the young corners are just so good that you don't need Dylan Tatum there anymore, which might be a stretch or I don't know, like what, how do you view the cornerback room right now? Because we just talked the other day on the show, like you could use another one in the spring transfer portal window, maybe not as a starter, but at least for depth. Because, man, yeah, Chance Rucker, Caleb Coley, that's fine. And then Chuck Brantley, Marquis Lowry, they're fine, but they're always hurt too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, is it is it right or wrong to be nervous about the cornerback position as we dive further into spring here? I mean, I think if you've been watching Michigan State's defense and the past defenses yeah. for the last four, you know, I'd be We're there's, a reason, to, yeah. there's <laughs> a reason to be nervous about all that. Yeah, you know, I I think I think there's a reason for optimism because there's a change and and as I thought we saw some growth last year from the, and in the secondary from the young guys. Now, when you're playing Michael Penix, or you're playing Michigan, or you know, they are getting torched still. But, <laughs> right. you know, I mean, there was there's some competitive young guys in there and, and, you know, we'll see corners a position where it seems like Michigan State's getting these guys to step up as true freshmen almost any year. Like, you know, since my first season on the beat, which was 17, um, she's what was oh uh, Why am I blanking on his name? Um, oh, the guy from Ohio, he came right in and uh, undersized guy who started immediately as a freshman. Why Josiah Scott. I, Josiah thank Scott. you. Yeah, there we go. Terrible. Bang. Look at us cook. Right. Let's go. Yeah. There we it's go. It <laughs> feels like uh, both yesterday and 100 years ago. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you get a guy that can come in as a true freshman and physically be ready, which Scott obviously was, and you, you've seen these other guys over the years do it too. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not predicting a 
one of these true freshmen are going to come in and instantly be a starter, but you never know. It's a position where you can, if you're physically ready and you can handle it, then go for it. But yeah, to the corner specifically, uh, I think, you know, uh, Rutgers are a guy that you would expect to be in the mix. And then after that, it gets really unclear. Cause as you mentioned, Brant- Brantley hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's, you know, on the thin side, Lowry, I thought we've seen some good flashes from him, but that, I mean, really it was mostly like, geez, 2021. It feels like now, a like late season ago. 2021. And he just can't, right. can't stay on the field injury wise. And then, you know, the young guys, Coley's and, and guys like that. So we'll see, but uh, you know, yeah. there are, there's some experience there, you know, like with the Lowry and, and, and you know, even Samar Melvin, who came from Wisconsin as a transfer, yeah. and, and he didn't get on the field last year with injuries. So we'll see. Um, but, you know, there, I could I could see a reason to be optimistic, cautiously optimistic about the secondary. How about cautiously that? optimistic. That's kind of the theme of this offseason. I feel like that's a yeah. good way to have it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, now, next, I want to get to a storyline that started way before spring practice even kicked off. It's Jordan Hall. What do you stay? What do you go? You had a nice piece for M Live. But first, I'm so sorry to do this to you, Matt. I got to send you to the bench because I need to talk to people's ears off about Robin Hood. That is right. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have a Roth or you could still have an IRA. Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boasting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robin Hood Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years of 3% matching on trans- is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Now let's get the one, the only Matt Wenzel of MLive back into the mix here because he riffed on Jordan Hall not too long ago. I don't want to give away the whole article that you did because, hey, good work like that requires a subscription. That's right. That's just the way it is these days, baby. Were you are, are are you stunned that you're talking to Jordan Hall right now, or did you think that he was going to be a flight risk here when the winter transfer window opened? Because I like obviously I could very well see why he would want to leave here. That was a crazy end to the season. He's a very talented player. Just how do you break down the whole Jordan Hall off season? Yeah, you know he was a guy when when you when when you're in the middle of it last year in September, you know, when the window opened after Mel got fired, I, you know, there was basically like, you had question marks about everybody on the roster. Yeah. And Jordan would be one guy. I mean, granted he was playing. Um, right. I think he was starting. I don't know. It was Iowa's first start either way. Um, you know, he was a guy that pretty open about why he came to Michigan state. You know, he came because, you know, he, he talked about on his first visit, Mel Tucker broke down film and told him what he was doing wrong. And, and he, and he mm-hmm. liked that. He announced his commitment during that Spartan dog con uh, thing at, at Mel's house. Yeah. So, you know, and <laughs> so, yeah, obviously that was a concern, but I thought it was really interesting when he said, you know, his anybody on this who knows Twitter knows his mom and his mom sure. obviously likes Michigan State, but would support him whatever he decided to do. And the way he described it was he basically saw staying at Michigan State as transferring, but not going anywhere because it is okay. a completely new staff. So good way to look at it. Um, you know, and he's, I mean, from the day he walked in, you know, Jordan Hall has been mature beyond his years. You know, he's got future captain, you know, stamped on him, his forehead, all yeah. that. But um, yeah, I just, I, I thought that was an interesting approach to take. And, and, you know, ran it. Everything's fluid. Who knows? You know, we'll see how the spring goes. I mean, you know, if he likes his, you know, he could still, you know, enter the portal after the spring and decide, you mm-hmm. know, that, he, that it's not the right fit. And, and you know, that's, we'll see. And I don't, I don't like mean to single him out on that. Everybody can, you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he, he's a guy, obviously, they wanted to keep, you know, a lot of, you know, good, young, talented guys, starts as a true freshman leader. And um, he, he had a, <laughs> 
interesting way of, of um, challenging Jonathan Smith. Uh, he said the first team meeting, um, Smith told everybody, all the players, you know, he gave him a piece of paper and wrote, told him to write down three things that he thought were issues um, the past season. And so Hall wrote down two and, and then wrote his phone number as the third thing and then asked him to give him a call and, kind of, you know, <laughs> testing him is because Smith said he was going to read these personally. So basically like, all right, let's I see, like are you, you going to read yeah. this? And yeah. he said a day or two later, he he got a call and then met with them. So I, I like that. I like that. It's a pretty smart young guy yeah. to, to, to challenge his head coach and say, are you really, are you going to, are you a man of your word? And, 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 you know, let's go from here. So uh, I like that approach from Jordan. And, and obviously uh, uh, Smith answered, he, he wasn't lying at least, uh, or somebody, yeah. at least he read it at enough point at some point in the, within a day to give him a call. Just three things. Wow, that's you probably could open up to 333 things to write down that they want changed from last year. But not, nevertheless, we're on to the next chapter here. We did talk about Jordan Hall, too, because we did an episode not too long ago about how can Michigan State still win the spring, okay? And, well, thinking of last year, when the star receiver and the quarterback leave at the last minute, started to think, well, you got to make sure that your stars don't leave. And, of course, we brought Jordan Hall's name and. I'm not going to ask you if, like, for a mortal lock, like, you must say it defiantly that he's going to stay here. But based on your conversations and what you're feeling around these practices, like, things leaning in the right direction. Because we say that, because going into winter, I think he was on the Spiro Avenue show where he said, yes, I am staying here in January. Like, it was a very, like, weird coded way of saying it. But do you do you think that things are looking good on that front, at least? I mean, from from... Our outside perspective, I'd say so. I, I, okay. would, I would say that if it wasn't going well, they wouldn't have brought Jordan out to talk to us. You know, that's yeah, just probably the way it is. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like last last year he, they brought him out twice during okay. the spring or two. Like it was to the point where you know I've been doing this long enough where they they weren't bringing out true freshmen multiple times during right. you know spring when it's like okay you, this guy's getting on the field this year. So I would just assume things are going well or else he wouldn't have been talking to us the other day. No, that's fair enough. And, you know, speaking of true freshmen, I want to get into some mailbag questions here. We opened up the mailbag, LockdownSpartans at gmail.com not too long ago. We got some great football questions. I'm like, hey, sure, like I can have fun answering these, but why not have like a bona fide expert like Matt Wenzel here to join the party here in a hot second? But first, Matt, I hate to do this to you again. Got to send you to the bench because I need to talk to people's ears off about Game Time, the best ticketing app out there. If you don't believe me, you just got to hop on Game Time and see it for yourself. Now, if you know that you're going to go to a game or a concert or a theatrical performance later on in the week, hey, just hop on every day and check out their deals going on. OK, Game Time is here to save you money or you're on the opposite end, you're a procrastinator, kind of like myself in some cases, you're going to walk up to the game with no tickets in hand. Open up your phone on the game time app and they have their last minute ticket deals. Guys, you're going to save up until I think it's a half hour, if not a full hour after kickoff or the first pitch or the concert beginning. Point blank, game time is saving you money. They also make it so easy. It's just two taps and bang, the tickets are sent straight to your phone. You don't have to go through all your email when there's no service outside the stadium and you're panicking, wondering if you could even get in. No, no, no. Game time makes it incredibly easy. And again, they are here to save you that money. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college. All when we're locked on college for $20 off. Download the game time app today. It's last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And let's drag the one, the only Matt Wenzel of M live back into the mix here, because again, you guys came in hot with some great mailbag questions. And speaking of a guy that just played as a true freshman here in Jordan Hall, Jameson writes in, how many freshmen will see playing time on the football team this year? Will any sophomore start next year who are not named Aiden Childs or Jordan Hall? Let's start with the freshman aspect of that. Any of these freshmen you think are going to get some early run here this fall, Matt? It's always a tricky uh, question and when we yeah. always ask every year, but I would just pick up from one guy. I would say Nick Mars, um, not to take sure. the easy way out and go with the the highest ranked yeah. guy, but but that's just I think he plays a position where he can make the transition quickly. And Michigan State just lacks real size. I mean, yeah. you get guys they have like your Montori Fosters and John Glovers and and Lante Browns at receivers, but they don't really have 
the size, and they didn't really have it last year. So um, Nick's a guy that, you know, 6'3", I believe. Uh, it was funny. We're, the first practice when we were in there, I'm looking at him like, I don't remember him being that tall. I, gotcha. I, talked, I talked to him before in the past, and I just like, oh, right, I guess I must have just forgot. So he's yeah. a guy I would say that has a, has a good chance to get on the field uh, first year just, you know, for a knee in the offense. I think it was even – it was Dylan Tatum that was saying – that was even talking about, um, you know, we got a lot of we got some speed guys, but we don't have size in the back end, and so gotcha. I think Nick's a guy that could be um, fit that role. One other name I had jotted down is Jalen Thompson, the defensive back, Jalen Thompson, and again that goes back to our conversation we had in the first segment here of. Sure, you have some guys that you like there, but also health has been an issue. So whether it is that hey he's just that good to play early, or just by attrition of injuries that you got to just throw somewhere out there. I, maybe he gets a little bit of burn. I don't know. But, yeah, Nick Marsh seems like the the correct – I mean, safe option, sure, but that's because it's the correct option, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Sophomores, though, because – not just that Jalen Thompson, but how about the other Jalen Thompson, too, for defensive end is one name I had written down. But other sophomores not named Aiden Childs or Jordan Hall that you see making an instant impact this fall? Well, yeah, I mean, Jalen Thompson be right near the top of the list behind behind Jordan or alongside Jordan Hall, mm. you know, and he kind of came out of nowhere last year. You know, I thought in that class you had there were three four star defensive ends, you know, by Joe, Andrew Pape and Jalen Thompson. And Thompson got by far the <laughs> the least of the buzz out of the three of them coming in. Certainly. And he wasn't an early enrollee and and mm-hmm. he really wasn't even a factor early. And the next thing you know, he's starting and, you know playing well. I think it was the Minnesota game where he was really, he had a couple tackles for loss or his sacks. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought you saw some really rapid development out of him last year. And I would expect him to, you know, be building on that this year and uh, chance Rucker. I, I mean, we were talking about some of the same guys, yeah. but another guy that I, you know, would assume will be a sophomore starter, but um, I'm really interested to see his, his game. Cause you know, talk about getting thrown in the fire. Like, Hey, yeah. uh, you're a true freshman. Uh, go cover Marvin Harrison Jr. at Ohio State at night in front of 100,000 people. How's that going to go for you? I mean, that's just – I mean, you can only get better from there. And, and you know, you to, his, to his credit, I mean, like, who the hell in the country is going to fare much better? I mean, it's right. the best receiver in the nation. So you, you take your lumps and move on. And and I thought he, he you know, a good job of doing that uh, as a true freshman. So I, I'll be interested to see what he does and then – uh, maybe Brennan Parachek. I know with with Jack Velling coming yeah. in, you know, that's that's a guy who obviously is going to, you would assume, get a lot of snaps. Tiny Hopper's Hopper's back for his seventh year. We'll see where he's at health-wise. And then right. after that, it's a lot of young guys without much experience. But Parachek got on the field as a true freshman last year, and they like to use tight ends a lot in their offense. So, you know, you're going to see multiple tight ends on the field at the same time. So maybe uh, Parachek takes the uh, next step uh as a sophomore as well. I like that a lot because I had Parachek and uh, Michael Masunas written down too. So the fact you said it makes me feel a lot smarter. But yeah, there, there's a bit of a log jam there. Jack Valen, obviously, just like you said, Tiny Hill Hopper. But man, like these guys are so talented that, especially with the way that they structure their offense around tight ends, it's almost like Mel Tucker and company recruited like for a Jonathan Smith offense, which thanks, Mel. Appreciate you that. Know, man. <laughs> you know, that, one of the more puzzling things of the Mel Tucker era was. Yeah. The weirdness at tight end where, yes, I mean, and, yes. and, you know, first of all, full credit to Tyler Hunt. Um, and, sure. uh, yeah. oh, geez, why am I blanking on his name uh, from last year? Uh, oh, oh God. Evan Moore. No. So, yeah, there Evan we go. Morris. Thank you. Yeah, there we you go. You know, full credit to those guys going from walk-on specialists to starting tight ends. Yeah. That, that you know, that's, that's hard. That's a lot of work. It just – you're pu- it was puzzling that you're recruiting, you have these four star kids, and where's the development? Where are these? Where are these guys? Why, why, why do you have walk ons? Well, Hunt went on and earned a scholarship, but why do you have walk ons starting at tight end of the Big Ten? This yes. is just unusual yes. and weird. And but again, credit to those guys for working hard to get there. Just it's very puzzling, you know. Connor Hayward came out of nowhere. Yeah, but, you know, in 21, you know, you thought, oh, this guy's going to be buried in the backfield. And next thing you know, he's he found his position. They found the right spot for him tight end H back and he got drafted. So but other than that, 
you know, obviously, you know, don't need to talk too much about the Malik Carr situation and, and just unmet sure. expectations, but they, they, they need some stability and sustained production at tight end. I'll put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Hunt and Morris, great stories. I just don't know if great stories are the way to structure championship football teams. Um, you can have a few of them every once in a while, but when it's year after year, Okay, I'd like to do something different here. Um, Adam writes in, who of the returning football players are we going to see the biggest progression from last year, and which players from last year will most benefit from new coaches, position group, or individuals? So start, I guess, wherever you want there. Like, Do you see anyone taking a leap, or do you just go right to position group when you hear that question? I mean, I, I'll, I'll take the easy option on, on to start uh, individually, Aiden Giles, just because, uh, you yeah. know, Aiden Giles is sure. your quarterback. That's the position that's going to get the most attention. Michigan State's quarterback play was subpar the last two years, and uh, Aiden's got plenty of hype, and we'll see because, he's you know, I think uh, Smith said he's like 20 pounds heavier now than he was last year, and, yeah. and Aiden's a – I'm just really interested to see what he can do, so, and that's just the easy cop-out answer. So, But I will go position group because, you know, we've talked about – Defensive backs kind of, uh, you know, thoroughly. So I'll tell you offensive line because it's another obvious issue that, you know, yeah. just didn't really work under the previous regime. I think the 21 season, you know, you had that veteran group where they were going like nine deep. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, for a good portion of the season. But you now that was also with the best player in the country in the backfield. So it just it just didn't come together. And, and now you got a new offensive line coach and a new offensive coordinator new scheme and and that offensive line is going to need to be better um the run game is going to need to be better to for this team to take a step i mean the the days of michigan state lining up and running the ball at will seem like ancient history i mean it's fourth and short shotgun drop for a two-yard loss and and we'll go from there so i want to see what you know a new philosophy with uh, a veteran offensive line coach in Jim Mahalik. He, I'm going to butcher the Mahol- pronunciation. Mahalchik, thank you. A combination of both of those <laughs> is it, somewhere enough. in the middle is is the correct way to do it. Yeah. It took me it took me like a year to get Ma Naotaote that oh, pronunciation I, down, and now I now it's you know he's not the yeah. team anymore, so I got another one to work on. But um, you know, this is a guy that you know, has experience developing NFL offensive lineman um and i want to see what he can do with this group because it's a mixture of you got some guys coming back with experience you know your brandon baldwins and gino vandermarks of the world um and then you bring in you know tanner miller as your as your veteran um to be a center like i mentioned earlier and you got a was it luke newman i believe is the holy cross transfer that will join the program yeah, that's the. I would say that's the group that that you just really want to see some development because you saw some of these young guys late last season kind of emerging um, and pushing for more playing time. And most of the, those guys are, are most of them are back. You know, you lose Spencer Brown, you lose mm-hmm. say Mac and Duplain, but you know I'll be interested in, in Wigginton. But I, I want to see what these what these young guys can do, especially tackle spots. I want to you know the yeah. Ethan Boyds and guys like this. That where are they at and what's the what's the development look like? Totally. I'm glad you brought up the fourth and shorts last year. That, that That's why this got emptied at the end of every single game, because you knew damn well what was going to happen every single time. <laughs> it was a fourth pretty, and short. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, the days of fourth and short and just chuck it up to Jaden Reed. Those are uh, those ah, the glory days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are long gone. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I just I think fans are desperate to see something new because the offense was just. I mean, again, I hate to, other than the 2021 season, it was um, it was a uh, bad. I guess would be one way to put it. That's the nicest way to ever put it. So, look at you yeah. prof- professionally dressing that up because I got a lot yeah. of other words I could use. Yeah, but I won't. I'll try to be an adult this time around. Um, but Matt, this this was fantastic, man. Would love to drag you back here on the show uh, in the future. No question about it. Thanks a lot for burning up some of your time. Anything you want to plug here before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your day here? Jeez. I, I know. I've never been asked. My hardest question. Okay, the hardest well, one for I, last. That's right. I, I guess I would just say uh, go to uh, mlive.com slash Spartans for uh, Michigan State coverage there. I, I The company will uh, got its plug. 
There we go. Absolutely love it. Yep, you do fantastic work. Kyle Austin on the basketball beat, too. You guys are a dynamic duo. So thank you for everything that you guys do over at MLive. And also the viewers, the listeners, thank you all so much for chewing up some of your day here at Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white. We'll see you guys in a little bit because, again, we do this five days a week. But until next time, love you all. Go green.